What's up, y'all? I'm back with Jabari Banks. Give it up! So every year, thousands of refugees come into the U.S. Uh, they're trying to escape unimaginable circumstances. They often flee with nothing but the clothes on their back. And they get here with no job, no place to live, no connections, and, and not knowing how to speak English, um, some of them. So our next guest is going above and beyond to help those men and women start over here in Los Angeles. That makes her a good neighbor. Good, good, so good. Oh, I love that. I love this. <laughs> so it's my favorite part. Um, <laughs> let's welcome the president of Newcomers Access Center, Ann Thorward, everybody. Thank you. So meet Jabari. I know y'all yeah. met in the break, but um, th this all began with a chance meeting, right? It was. Okay, what happened? Yes. A neighbor of mine about five years ago said there was a young Syrian refugee girl in the high school, and she was very shy and having trouble learning English. So I contacted the teacher, and she let me come into the class a couple times a week and help. And through this young woman, I met a, her family, more refugee families, more community people, yeah. people at the local mosque, politicians, of course. Mm -hmm. And it just grew, and a bunch of community people, we got together and said, these people need a lot of help. They need more than just a day or a week. So we decided to form an organization. And wow. that's how Newcomers Access Center came about. You have such a great heart because a lot of people will see the need but not know how to like yeah. implement anything to help. Right. So it's awesome that you took the initiative and you formed this for them. So have you, have you ever been, had anything in like your community yeah. happen where you feel like you had to step in or help or do anything like that? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, um, my family is actually really big on, you know, community outreach. And, uh, you know, there's a big homeless uh, problem in, in Philadelphia. And so, you know, yeah. they've definitely been uh, very proactive in, in uh, helping with that. And, and I grew up uh, having a heart for, for, you know, community. And, and yeah. I think that the work that you're doing is super yeah. important. That's really cool. Your parents instilled that in you. And the homelessness yeah. is across the nation. It's just yeah. such an epidemic. It's yeah. really, really sad. Yeah. I think that's one of our goals is to prevent these immigrant and refugee people to, from being homeless. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we, we offer a lot of support. Our primary concerns are, of course, housing and transportation and learning our language. Mm -hmm. uh, we have um, a five apartments that have been given to us for a local college out in Claremont. Wow. And uh, the, the refugees do pay rent below market rent, and they're allowed to stay three to five months. And during that time, we have over 100 volunteers that come and help with English, using the computer lab to fill out a job application, taking them here and there, medical appointments, language classes. We, we have English classes every day at our office. You're giving opportunities. Yes. Yeah. yeah, because um, it's amazing because we have many professionals. We have an architect, a pharmacist, college professors, uh, people, um, media director, HR director, we have people with many professions. Skill sets, yeah. Skills that we can use, but their English ne needs to be, you know, brought up to a level where they can participate in their profession. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, so. and get a job easier. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we have a pharmacist who rides his bike six miles every day, one way to go to work. He works at a supermarket, moving wow. vegetables around. That's not a terrible job, yeah. but it's different for him. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Um, you also create a sense of community, though, right, with everybody that you work we with? We try to. We get the families together as much as we can, but the pandemic, as you say, has put a hiatus. Yeah. In the, but tomorrow, a local church is providing an international community uh, picnic with games and oh, get-togethers. Cool. Yeah. And the refugees are all encouraged to bring food from their own country mm. and share. And they it's like love a potluck. To do yeah, we used to do is. those at my church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah exactly. Everybody brings something. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. And the networking and the, the just for emotional support, mental, yeah. like all of that is really good. Like and that's where that our network. name comes from with access. We don't necessarily do all those things. We have volunteers, but we have access to mental health clinics, uh, medical situation, get the kids enrolled in school. Uh, we get thrills, you know, when mm. that uh, the kindergarten kid came home the other day and he said the alphabet perfectly. <laughs> hey, I'm a mom of young yeah. kids. That is a remarkable thing when it happens. Yeah. You're like, you almost got it. <laughs> I was like, yeah, L M N O P was a little crunch. It's yeah. always the. Oh, I know my, my my kids are always in me. I am in me. Yeah. I was like, yeah, we we're almost there. Right. So the Access Center helps refugees get settled in the states by helping with everything from housing and jobs to furniture and food, which are the essentials. Um, how many families do you think that you've helped so far? Uh, we have probably 61 families we have right now. Wow. Yes. 
Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's amazing, that yeah. difference. I hope that makes your heart feel good that you're- It does. You know, like we get one life and to do something so beautiful for and so selfless, that's an amazing thing. I know, thing. and the next yeah. one that comes is just as wonderful as the ones before. They oh. say it takes five to seven years for an immigrant family to become independent. Mm -hmm. oh. And I didn't realize it was that long. I thought, oh, we'll be doing this for a couple of years. Not. Yeah. So they're still coming, and we just love having them. And we have, when a new baby is born, we're thrilled. We mm -hmm. have uh, two young girls who came with their family five years ago, and they are now at the UC campuses studying pre-med. We wow. have, wow. yeah, we have yeah. lots of them. And those kids might have never had that opportunity no. had their parents not no, made this move for them and it was so tragic and, and traumatic yes. for them. But then y'all's help as yeah. well. It's so cool. We and all that help young girl that I helped in the ninth grade, she's now a mathematics major at the college. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Well, I want to bring a gentleman into this conversation who knows just how impactful the Newcomers Access Center can be. He fled Afghanistan and came to the States in 2017 with nothing to his name. Everybody say hello to Ahmad. Um, so, Ahmad, um, what was your life like before you came to America? Uh, I had a good life with my family, my mom, my dad, my sister, my brothers in Kabul city, Afghanistan. And I worked at the, the army base, making food, set up everything for the U.S. Army. But uh, the base is closed. They moved our army from Afghanistan to the United States, and it wasn't safe for me. And I came to the United States alone to set up a new life in here. Yeah, absolutely. Well, how did the Newcomers Access Center help you? Uh, so I come, when I came to the United States at the airport, LAX, uh, so I was doesn't know anything, but I was doesn't know what I have to do when I go out. And I come out and I see like five signs, like, welcome Ahmad to USA, welcome Ahmad to USA, and they give me a ride to my cousin house. And after that the newcomer centers, uh, Mrs. Ann, uh, she helped me out about my social security, my green card. Uh, she took care of me about uh, apartment, about my deposit, rent, food, furnitures, everything. And on 2019, I enrolled my wife to the United States and she helped her a lot about education, college, everything. So right now she's studying at the college. Uh, she was kind of speak English on that time, arrived in United States. Like now she kind of speak English very well, and I'm happy. Oh my gosh, I mean, you helped with, li he listed everything yes. in life. Yes. You just helped with everything. I was like, oh my gosh, you, you basically do what my mom helped me do with everything. Like I was yeah. like, that's, that's amazing. Yeah, they, his wife was a college chemistry professor in Afghanistan. And oh my she's, gosh. You know, one of the people that needs to, get more uh, proficient in English, and she's going to do well. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. The baby. Yeah, oh, yeah the baby. <laughs> got to talk about his baby. So, so wait, you and, you and your wife, you welcomed a son in 2020. Um, he had some medical issues at first, right? Yes, uh, he had a surgery on the heart, and he was two months at the hospital. Uh, uh, so Mrs. Ann, again, she helped me a lot. She was talking with the doctor every day, and she explained to me, uh, be strong, and uh, she bought for me like crepes, diapers, clothes, everything for my son. And right now, my son is he's doing very great, and we are happy. Oh my doing gosh, look well. at that really? smile! Oh! oh my gosh, so cute! Um, do you do you have anyone, Jabari, in your life um, who's given you such unconditional support in hard times? Oh, my mom. Your my mom. mother, for yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, you know, I was uh, I got into theater and, and acting kind of late in my life, and yeah. you know, uh, there wasn't a lot of resources uh, where I was living, and so she would drive me an hour out to the theater every day. Wow. You know what I mean? And, and yeah. that type of support that that um, that drive me to to be the best that I could. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. And not everybody gets those parents, you know? So that's right. amazing. Exactly. Yeah, that's a, that's, a great, that's a good thing. Yeah. So, um, Akhmad, do you want to say anything to Anne? Yes, I want to say I appreciate that, Mrs. Anne. God bless you. Thank you so much. Uh, she helped me like mom. I appreciate that so much for your help. You did the best. You're the best. I appreciate that. Newcomer centers, especially Mrs. Anne. You are the best. Thank, Thank you, you so much. You did the best for me. 
Well, what Anne and the Newcomers Access Center is doing for refugees is clearly so important. Um, that's why we reached out to our friends at Food for Less, who are committed to providing fresh, affordable groceries for everyone. Their goal is to create zero hunger and zero waste by 2025. It's an amazing goal, uh, which is why they are proud to donate $10,000 to Newcomers Access Center. Oh, yes. Oh, I'd love to hug you, Kelly. Oh, no, we can hug oh. later. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, um, that's, that's incredible. No. I'm just so thrilled. Oh, my God. No, I, I hope that. Oh, here. I look, I cry all the time. I have it on hand. I cry so much. Um, no, I, I just think it's really beautiful what you're doing. And, and you. you know, Ahmed's family. And, and I'm so glad, Akma, that your, your boy is doing so well now. Congratulations. That's a scary thing as a parent to have watch your baby in the hospital and, and not know what to do. So I'm, so I'm so glad he's better now. And this is just such a great story. Right. And I hope that you watching at home, you know, help your friend out. Help people out. We all need help sometimes.